Channel. Today I'm gonna be discussing my very own, my very personal, my very dear to my heart, come from my own blood, sweat, and tears, unpopular opinion. Can you see that? I'm not a mucky pop. I promise I'm not a mucky pop. Oh, but that has just made a mess. It's got oh tidy up later. I like I haven't done one of these in a while. Like I actually think I've done one in a year. <gasps> And you know, I like being a little quirky. I like being a little different from the crowd. And part of that, I have not got my rings. I look so unprofessional. Oh, now you can see my pajama bottoms as well. And of course, I'm going to be eating some good old fashioned sushi while I do this. We've got dragon rolls and spicy tuna rolls. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What the fuck was that? Ew, I hate myself. And obviously I got extra soy sauce because you can never be too soy in your sushi. Let me get some sushi in my mouth first. A little bit of petrol going to get my brain flowing. Mmm! Mm. Okay, let's get into this. Squid game. I can get into it. I'm sorry, I just really could not get into it. And I love being in the know. I love being in the loop. I really, really tried to get into it. It just wasn't hitting for me. I don't know if it was too serious. I don't know if it was just too, I don't know. Like I only got halfway through the first episode and me and the Squid Game, we weren't on the same page. We weren't in the same book. We weren't even in the same library. We just were not getting on. Very much felt like a GCSE science class where you get paired with a random partner in your class, which you've got no mutual interest in. And you know, neither of you are speaking and it's that really awkward thing where they say discuss in pairs for 10 minutes what you want to do and you both just kind of sit there like, yeah, yeah, no, that sounds good. Oh, well, I will say though, I think I'd be good in Squid Game. There's not a lot I wouldn't do for money, and babe, I'm competitive. I just don't see me losing that, I'm being completely honest. Mm. Also, while we're on the topic of spicy tuna and wasabi, people who can't handle spice are just really not part of the elite version of the specimen. God created spice on this planet for a reason, and it's for our digestive systems to digest. And if you cannot handle spice, that is you as a weak person. I am viewing you as a weak character. Your brain and taste buds are not fully developed to the extent that it should be as a human being like it's a personal issue that you have to work in put in the time put in the effort practice makes perfect as my year five piano teacher once said did i listen to her absolutely not it literally sounded like my fists were slamming on those keyboards and that's why i never advanced past grade three and my mom pulled me out justin bieber's clothing line drew I hate it. It's just not for me. I don't know what it is. It just gives me very like boohoo man vibes. Like I don't know. I personally don't like it. A lot of people on Instagram are wearing it. You do you. I'm not here to judge. It just doesn't do anything for me. I don't, there's never been a single item from that clothing company I've seen and I'm like, oh my God, let me get my PayPal up right here and right now. I don't know if this one's gonna catch me some slack, but um, every single 1975 song sounds the exact same. This one came to me the other day. I was listening to the radio in the car and a 1975 song came on and I was like, that is so random. Why are they playing like a random song from like 2014 on Radio 1 when we're supposed to be playing the top of the pop, the latest hit music. And then the song ended and the guy came on the radio and he was like, that was the new song from 1975 out today. And I was like, I've heard this song for the past seven years of my life. And it made me realize I cannot differentiate a single 1975 song in my head. I get it, maybe just their music isn't for me, but like it just all sounds the exact same for me. Not every TV show needs a reboot. Like, I, this new Gossip Girl, I haven't actually watched it. I've just seen clips on TikTok and it's just made me cringe. Made me cringe. It's just so cringy. Cringe, cringe, cringe. It makes me seem cruel. I'm literally watching it like, Okay. Okay. It just made me realize that we don't have to make every show have a reboot. Sometimes things are just left best in the past. We as humans are capable of creating new concepts. So why don't we get our little thinking caps on and think of something new? Um, speaking of that, sex education. First of all, popular opinion with the rest of the country. Love it. Season three was great. After this next season, I think we should leave it there. These people are supposed to be playing like 17 year olds and it looked like they could be at having a family of three and working in an office job for the past 20 years. Like, dude, you not look like high school students and it's absolutely preposterous like ridiculous like i can't really take the show seriously when i'm supposed to be sat here believing that some 35 year old has just taken their spanish gcse like it is just not believable and i just think that the storylines have kind of gone to where they should like everything's sort of like coming to a conclusion to an end four seasons is a good healthy amount for a tv show i just don't want this show to be run into the ground like other tv shows and the seasons get bad and it just get like do you know what i mean like sometimes shows just need to know when to end and i feel like sex education should probably end after the next season. I don't like the character Eric in sex education. 
Now don't get me wrong, is he absolutely hilarious? Yes. On the surface level, I love him so much, but we actually deep root into his character. He's trash. Season two, he had the lovely, lovely Raheem writing him poetry, really like on his knees. Like he, he was giving him like all the love in this world. And he chose the school bully over him. Then the school bully did a whole 360 like he was on the Olympic diving board or on that splash TV show Gemma Collins was on. And Eric still treated him like shit. Like, I, I'm sorry, he's just trash as a character. I don't know if this one's as unpopular, but Olivia Rodrigo is here to say she is the new main pop girl. Now, I can see her having the same sort of Korea as, you know, the Britneys and the Christinas and the Miley's and all those other Disney girls. Like, I feel like she is going to be ginormous in the next five years. When people are saying on TikTok as well, like, social media influence should not be at Fashion Week. Okay, well they are. Well, social media influence shouldn't be the face of high fashion brands. Why? Because the Emma Chamberlain Louis Vuitton is like one of the best sort of brand collaborations I've ever seen. I think of the two of them like synonymously now. And this goes for like the whole like, when we had that Instagram outage and people were sat on Twitter being like, Lol, what are influencers gonna be doing now? Lol, 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 troll, lol, 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 shut Oh my, shut up. Why do you care so much that someone else is making a living online? And when people sit there and are like, their jobs are so easy, like I could do it. Well, do it. People who sleep with one pillow, the devil. And like, I mean that quite literally. Like the only reason you're sleeping with one pillow is so you're closer to the ground and closer to the devil. That's the only explanation because it's so uncomfy. Anytime I go to someone's house and there's just one pillow, I'm like, I wasn't expecting to stay the night. I don't understand iPad. But like to me, an iPad is just a scrap of metal with some wires. Like this is not necessary. Faye from Love Island, you all did way too much on her. She was not that bad. And the amount of like, things that I've seen being like, she's the devil. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Barbara 45 from freaking Birmingham. You need to take a step back and calm down because it's really not that deep. If we literally think back to four years ago when we were all reciting Tiffany Pollard calling Gemma Collins every name under the sun on Big Brother. She was fly, hot, and sexy, and beautiful, and she's nothing like that. She's nothing of the sort. And then Faye just kind of like got a bit angry that her boyfriend may have potentially cheated on her. Like, I think it's kind of understandable, and I think I'd probably react the same. I don't know, like, it's a TV show. Like, I just think people did so much on her, and she really just wasn't that bad in the grand scheme of things. If you think back to all other reality TV, Faye's kind of like an angel in comparison, that like she could really be Angel Gabriel in the nativity. I wrote this list a few days ago, and now, like, I don't know if I force out of this, but I feel like this is a popular opinion now. But I think Little Mix works way better as a trio. They've released the best music I personally think of their career as a trio. I've never loved Little Mix more than I do right now, and I just love them as a trio. I think they work so well together. iPhone. iPhone just needs to calm down. How much bigger and how much uglier can we get? Like, I just kind of feel like at this point we need a new phone to move on to. Ed Sheeran. I've got two opinions and they kind of contradict each other, but like, you'll kind of understand. Number one is not as bad as you lot make out. Like, he's so innocent and like, kind of cute. Like, I just kind of want to wrap him up in a little burrito and roll him down a hill and protect him from the world. And everybody just seems to hate him and like, take the piss out of him. And I don't really understand what he's done to deserve that. He gave us bops like 18. He gave us that bop, which is like, never be anything but a single song right of your five wax for my ginger hair. Yeah, yeah, I've got pipe. <laughs> I've got some pipe I can blow. I'll blow, blow, blow your house down. But also at the same time, I don't know who is listening to Ed Sheeran music. I mean, he does kind of make music for the 35 year old woman who enjoys a pink gin on a Friday evening and then an Emmerdale omnibus to cure the hangover on a Saturday morning. Mm. Married at First Sight. Married at First Sight UK, the new version that they've just done. Some of the best TV that I've watched in years. And I don't know why no one is talking about this show. No one. I can't see anyone on Twitter, anyone on Instagram. None of my friends watch it. It was incredible viewing, enticing, engaging. It had my jaw dropping. I had to pick it up off the floor and relocate it. If you haven't watched it, I'm pretty sure it's on 4OD. Well, I'm assuming so because I watched it on Channel 4. So good. Like, I genuinely think everyone should go watch it. It's way better than any of the recent seasons of Love Island. It was just so good. People need to stop saying that Adele needs to do more of beat music because she doesn't like i see so many tweets being like but she just does the same thing every time and it's good why fix what's not broken if adele started doing like little upbeat pop songs it's not it it's not adele is there for me to cry to not for me to shake my ass to it's a speciality she specializes in it you don't go to a japanese restaurant and ask for a plate of pasta because they specialize in sushi the same way adele specializes in songs which crumple my heart into one throw it onto the floor and stomp on it with a fucking digger that's her speciality. And on that note, they were all my unpopular opinions for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, make sure you subscribe because if you subscribe, you don't actually get anything. And if it's actually probably a negative because you're just going to see more of my annoying face and voice. But, you know, it makes me happy. So, <laughs> oh, God. I'll see you guys very soon for a brand new video. Bye.